In this video, we're going to discuss the p-scale and hydronium ion concentration, basically the way we measure and mathematically calculate things like pH and pOH, or the amount of acid or base in a solution. We'll start with a quick rundown of the objectives in this video. Uh, we'll first start with a discussion of what acid concentration actually is. This will be a continuation of the molarity concentrations we've already had earlier in the chapter. Then we're going to focus on the p-scale itself. Uh, the p-scale can be used to measure the, the amount of anything on a logarithmic scale. We're going to focus on measuring the concentration of H for our acids and the concentration of OH for our bases on that logarithmic scale as a simple tool for measuring acid and base concentration. We'll then wrap it up with a couple extra equations that tie all those values together uh, and tie them back to the concentrations of acids and bases in water. Last but not least, uh, we'll talk about how pH can be measured as opposed to calculated, and we'll do a couple example problems that'll take into consideration some of the equations we'll bring up during the video. So to dive right in, we're going to start with a brief discussion of what acid concentration is all about. Uh, acid concentration is measured as the number of moles of either H plus or H3O plus uh, per liter of solution of water. If you recall from uh, our previous video, H plus and H3O plus is basically two different ways we have of representing acids. H plus being the Arrhenius model of the acid and H3O plus being the Bronsted-Lowry model. Now you might recognize this moles per liter thing. This is of course molarity and that's exactly how we're going to express these concentrations of acid in solution. Uh, something new this time around is representing molarity in the form of uh, brackets. Uh, just like we could say a solution is a three molar solution, uh, we can write that um, the symbol of what itself, for example, we can say bracket H plus is equal to three molars and this is how we would talk about a concentration of an H plus solution. So again, the symbols we'll be using a lot in this particular section is bracket H3O+, plus, which means our acid concentration in molarity, and our bracket OH-, minus, which is our hydroxide concentration in molarity, basically being the way of measuring the acid concentration or the base concentration. Moving on, uh, the concentration then, now that we have our symbols in place, the, the concentration of H3O is dependent on the acid that it comes from. For example, HCl, when combined with water and dissolved, turns into H3O plus and Cl minus. Uh, this is more of a um, Bronsted-Lowry uh, version of what we're dealing with with our acids here. And we can see that one mole of the HCl ion puts in one mole of the H3O plus, and we can see that from the balanced chemical reaction. All of these guys have coefficients of one. So we can therefore say that one mole of HCl in, in one liter of water creates an H3O concentration of one molar. So we can almost go as far as to say this, the concentration of HCl in this solution is going to be the same as the concentration of the H3O plus, uh, because again, that's what our stoichiometry tells us. So continuing this idea that H3O is dependent on the acid it comes from, we can take a look at this type of an acid. Notice that uh, H2SO4 has two H pluses uh, per this. So when we write the reaction out, we get our H3O ion again, but notice we now get two of them. This is what's known as a diprotic acid because it produces two H3O ions per one mole of this. Continuing along that line of thought, one mole of sulfuric acid makes two moles of H3O plus ions and therefore a one mole solution dissolved in one liter of water is going to create a two molar concentration because again we get twice the acid per mole, twice the H3O plus per mole of acid that we actually dissolve. So this will be something that's important for us later on down the road. So let's change our attention then to the actual way we go about measuring this, uh, something known as the p-scale. Uh, we can represent our concentrations in the form of actual concentrations, or more simply, we can represent them on this new scale. Uh, basically what it is, is a convenient scale for keeping track of very, very small numbers. Uh, it's a logarithmic scale, which is how it allows us to do that, uh, and that each unit in the log scale represents a factor of 10. For example, 2 is 10 times bigger on the log scale than the value 1, and 3 is 10 times bigger than the value 2. Uh, this is very similar to the Richter scale used to measure um, the intensity of an earthquake. An intensity 7 earthquake is 10 times more powerful than an intensity 6 earthquake. 
the general equation we use to calculate anything on the p scale, uh, so p sub n is whatever you want to have on the p scale measurement, uh, we take the negative log of whatever the actual value is. So we plug our value in here, we put negative log in our calculator, and that'll convert it into the p scale. Now let's get more specific. Uh, we want to know the pH and the pOH, things that might be a little more uh, recognizable for us. If you want to calculate the pH, it is the negative log of the concentration of the H3O ions. And if you want to calculate the pH, it is the negative log of the OH concentration. Um, so any we want to calculate either of these values, we simply need to either know the concentration H3O or the concentration OH would allow us to calculate the pH and pOH. Or if we know the pOH and pOH and you know your algebra with logarithms, that would allow us to calculate then the hydronium ion concentration or the hydroxide ion concentration. Calculations that are very important uh, for the math we're about to do in the acid base section of this unit. Really quickly, uh, before we go too far into this, this is something you've probably seen multiple times over the years, but it's just an idea of some of the things uh, that we would see on our pH scale. Uh, for example, one common substance we have is lemon juice here, clocks in between uh, pH of 1 and 2. Uh, and then on the other end of the spectrum, things like ammonia are coming on the scale in the vicinity of 12. Uh, and again, we see a lot of substances show up in the spectrum here. Uh, if you recall from earlier science classes, when your pH value is less than 7, we're dealing with a substance that is an acid. When your pH value is equal to 7, you've got a substance that is neutral. And when your pH value is greater than 7, you've got something that we would consider to be a base. Uh, and again, we can associate acids and vinegars and stuff like that are below 7. Those are acids. Uh, regular old drinking water, a normal range of stream water is right around 7 neutral. And then things like ammonia and lye, which we know to be basic, uh, have pHs greater than 7. All right, before we move on to some actual uh, measurement and mathematics, uh, I have a couple more equations I want to show you here. Uh, we won't get into too much of the detail with these now, but they are valuable for converting back and forth between different values. Uh, because of the nature of water and how it behaves, uh, the pH of a solution plus the pOH of a solution always equals the number 14, which if you recall is the maximum of the pH scale. Uh, therefore, if you know the pH of a solution, you can immediately calculate its pOH and vice versa. Likewise, this same exact equation expressed without the logs attached to it means that the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion always multiplies to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And again, if you're clever with your logarithms, this 14 here and the negative 14 here are simply the product of that negative log calculation we were doing from before. Uh, so again, it's the same equation, one expressed with the logarithms in it, one expressed without. Both can be used as tools to convert back and forth between any four of these values. So before we actually get into some of the example problems, uh, we'll talk very briefly about how pH is actually measured, uh, something we can do in the lab. Uh, one of the simplest ways of doing it is using a substance like litmus paper. A picture of that is over there on the right. Uh, this is basically a small piece of paper that's infused with a chemical that changes color based on acid concentration. And you can see that these typically come with a measuring scale for color comparison and that's exactly what we see here on the actual container. It's got the different color ranges and it's got the pH values that go along with it. This pH paper is capable of measuring from a pH of 1 all the way up to a pH of 11. You would dip a small piece of this in your solution, match it color wise and that would give you a general idea of what your pH was. If you're looking to get a little more technical, we can use a digital pH meter. Uh, the way this works is it's got special type of glass that is filled with a solution at a constant pH. Uh, and that glass is located right at the end of this tiny little probe here. Uh, what happens is, is the, um, the device then reads an electrical current that is induced by the differences in concentration from the solution outside versus the solution inside of the probe. Uh, and that, um, that um, differential there can be measured as an electrical value, uh, and then it can be correlated to a pH value that shows up on the measuring scale here. This would provide you with an actual measurable numeric value, whereas the pH paper just gives you a broad idea of where you are. Many more significant digits available a much more high quality instrument. 
All right, so let's wrap this up by uh, actually trying some of the mathematics that goes along with this. Uh, if you feel like you're comfortable with your logarithms, pause the video, give this problem a try. Uh, you're asked to calculate the pH of this solution and the pOH of the solution uh, based on this hydronium ion concentration. You should be able to use those four equations we outlined uh, in order to figure this particular thing out. If you don't know what you're doing, move to the next part of the video. I'll explain and walk through the answers, and then you can try the next one, which is a similar problem. So to calculate pH then, uh, we can use the equation for pH, which is equal to the negative log of the concentration of the H3O plus ion, and we're actually given that information, so we can plug that right in. Negative log of 2.83 times 10 to the negative fifth, and if you plug all of that into your calculator, you get a value of 4.5. Five, uh, and I didn't mention it before, but I'll say it now. pH values are unitless, so this is the pH for our solution. That takes care of this calculation. Uh, the other thing we were asked to calculate was the pOH, and that's where our other equation comes in, because we know that pH plus pOH has to add up to the value of 14. That means 4.55 plus our pOH equals a value of 14, and again, our calculator can do that math for us and we get an answer of a pOH that is equal to 9.45. And again, just like pH, this value is unitless. So I hope what you can see from this is it's really just taking a couple simple equations, plugging in appropriate numbers, and solving for a missing variable. Just like before, you can use the equations to uh, see if you can calculate this. Now I'm giving you a concentration of sulfuric acid. You need to use the information from earlier in the video about this diprotic acid uh, in order to calculate the pH of the solution. Again, pause the video, look through your notes, give this a try. I'll go over the answer in a moment. If you recall from earlier in the video, when something like sulfuric acid, H2SO4, reacts with water uh, in a Bronsted-Lowry model, it creates two moles of the hydronium ion, and it creates one mole of the sulfate ion as a result of that. This two to one ratio means for us that a 0 0.1 molar solution of H2SO4 actually turns into a 0 0.2 molar solution of H3O plus. So this is the concentration of our H3O plus sign. Once we know this, again, it's simply a matter of going to our pH equation. pH will be equal to the negative log of the 0.2 value, and we let our calculator do that heavy lifting for us, and we get a pH value of 0 0.7, a very, uh, very acidic, a very low pH, uh, and that's pretty much what we're looking for. So to wrap things up, uh, here's a list of the things you should be able to do as a result of this video and the subsequent class practice. Uh, you should be able to describe what acid uh, concentration is. You should, be you should be able to identify um, acids as being monoprotic or diprotic and then, and then use how that information affects the concentration of H3O+. Uh, describe what, how pH is measured uh, using either pH paper or a digital probe. And last but not least, being able to calculate pH, pOH, concentration of acid, concentration of base uh, from any one of the four values. You should be able to quickly and easily interchange between the two of them. As always, we'll practice a bunch of this in class until you guys feel a little bit more comfortable. And if you have any questions, make sure to write them down, bring them in so they can get addressed.